NGF Chief General Rudzani Mapwanya visited Alexandra earlier today. That follows, of course, days of violence and looting in the township just in the northern part of Johannesburg. Speaking earlier, he said soldiers will meet force with force. My colleague, ENCS Lindelo Masigane, is in Alex and joining us now uh, on the Media View this hour. In the last hour, Lindelo, we tried to cross to you live as that helicopter was about to take off. The noise overpowered your beautiful voice, but we got the gist of what was happening. What can you tell us? What stood out for you? Just for me, as a South African citizen, not speaking as a journalist, as a South African citizen, I felt comforted by his words, his strong words of saying that this is it now. I can't tell you, but Dan, um, you know, watching that chopper that uh, had the SNDF chief circling in, circling in the air and making its way down to land here at the Alex Mall, I think it really reiterated just how serious this situation is and just how serious um, I think our government's response is now taking into effect. We know that we have been seeing uh, a very lackluster um, approach to, uh, you know, what happened, uh, but, uh, you know, it just seems as though that Lord enforcement is trying to make up um, for what you've been seeing over the past couple of days. And uh, the SANDF chief landed here in Alexandria to encourage some of the troops that have been deployed here, um, as well as to reiterate and reinforce the fact that uh, the state is just simply not going to allow this lawlessness to continue. Uh, as you correctly stated, he, to quote him, said that they are going to meet force with force and that they will not allow um, the uh, South Africans' freedom um, uh, to be affected in this manner, saying that the malls that have been looted, the, uh, the malls and the shopping centers and um, uh, strate the, the, the strategic um, economic sabotage just will simply not be allowed to continue. He, he, he also did say that uh, they will be deploying more SNDF members uh, to KZN that is still volatile, uh, but appreciated the, appreciated the fact that uh, the deployment of the troops here in Gauteng um, is clearly taking effect. Let's take a listen. Our work will be met with the necessary force that it deserves. We will meet force with force. Our responsibility is to defend our people and we are not going to allow our people to be held in ransom. We are not going to allow that there are those thugs that move around threatening the livelihood of people. Elderly people now do not have anywhere to go because the malls are destroyed. Elderly people cannot get their mundende because their malls are destroyed. People have lost their jobs, and now we say enough, it's enough. And we are here now to emphasize that enough, it's enough. We are not going to tolerate and sit back. We will increase numbers, we will increase capabilities, and we will match them and defeat whatever purpose that they are up to. Because this is no longer just pure robbery and thuggery. As I said, it's economic sabotage, and we are going to come up with solutions, and we are going to defeat whatever effort that they are up to. And one wonders, and I'm asking myself, I'm sure many South Africans as well, Slindelo, who is actually behind this economic sabotage that the general was referring to there? But I was pleased to hear him saying, Hutlong, Khao, Sabola. It's finally here. Enough is enough. But you also got to speak to Paul Mashatile. Currently, he's a treasurer general of the governing party. And some people have been wondering if this has got anything or how much of this mayhem we've seen has got anything to do with the factional lines we've seen within the governing party. Certainly, to us, I did pose that question to him. But I want to show you some of the effects um, of uh, the uh, economic sabotage, to quote the chief. Um, the effects here in, in Alexandria, before I take you to the soundbite from the TG, uh, you can see just to my right um, many of the uh, residents here in Alexandria who are now forced to come and do their shopping here at this mall, which is the only mall left standing. You can see, if I ask uh, Kamuhelo Masakwan, just can to his right, you can see people who are actually just um, shopping for basic goods. You can see in their hands, they, they have uh, meat, they have um, eggs, 
and it's just the bare, bare necessities. I stopped one of these shoppers here. Unjanibab. Just tell me, what brings you to the mall here today? Yeah. yeah, as you can see by then, uh, you know, simple basic necessities, eggs, mini meal, um, some, uh, I see some uh, products to uh, uh, body products as well. Um, and this is just what we've been seeing throughout the day. Oh, I see fish oil, I see baked beans, just those necessities that are needed for uh, South Africans to get by um, day to day. And this is the effects that people are rushing to malls to try and stock up whatever they can. I mean, you can tell the, what time of the month it is. Um, and these are the effects uh, that people are now going through. And I pose this question to the TG to say, how much blame is the ANC going to take? And this, is, this was his response. I don't think it's factional battles. I think what happened is that there are uh, comrades, obviously, who recklessly incited people. Um, Can you name them? We know them, right? Can you name them with them? Carl Niehaus. Kebi Mapatwe, the former ministers, uh, the people. former president's daughter. It's, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's not a faction thing. It's people who are out of order, who incited people, and, and they must be dealt with. It's that nothing to do with, uh, uh, with the faction. President Zuma was sentenced by a court of law, not by President Ramaphos. Now, for people to come point fingers at the president, I think it's out of order. We have an independent judiciary in this country and we don't want to interfere with the decisions of the judiciary. Uh, so I think for now we want to focus on working with communities to bring back stability. Communities are out there cleaning, they are working with security forces and going forward we are saying to our communities protect your facilities, protect these areas, they belong to you. Well. Uh, hopefully there will be action because uh, from that bite we've just played of Paul Mashatile saying, well, it's people who are out of order and they'll be dealt with. Well, we're waiting for the action because look at the damage Linda, that's been done to our country and the effects are going to be felt for a long time. But I understand you also spoke, you tried to speak to the social development uh, minister, Is that, that's Linda Wezulu. A very bizarre interaction, I must say. Uh, he, uh, the social development minister was here at the mall when the SANDF chief arrived, and she also joined um, some uh, officials like the ANCTG as well as the deputy uh, minister of Cocta, who also came to the area. And I wanted to pose, of course, some questions to her with regards to the government's response, and in particular her department's response to the fact that uh, there are some SASA officers that are non-operational uh, that have been, of course, destroyed but also the fact that uh, there was a message that was sent out that uh, uh, SASA beneficiaries may not be able to get their payouts. And she simply ran away from me. Take a look. I have a number of officials here. Minister, 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 Minister. As you can see to this, I'm not quite sure where she's going, but uh, it seems as though she's not keen to answer any questions. We know that a number of um, uh, uh, social grant uh, dispensaries um, have, been, um, have been burnt down. I wonder why, I wonder why Ms. Zulu didn't want to talk to you. Maybe we'll find out in the near future, but it was going to be an important question because the Sasa, Sasa grant beneficiaries have been really badly affected. Even the SANTF chief earlier, when you spoke to him, he referred to say people uh, about told him they, and they can't, you know, it's so, and the minister in charge didn't want to talk to us. It's unfortunate. She has a reasons. We'll find out. Thank you very much, Slindelo uh, Masigane, in Alexander Township at this hour here on the midday view. Now,